you can change the speed of a clip in Premiere Pro. That is, you can put it into slow motion, speed it up, freeze frame, even put it in reverse. There are three different ways to do that. I'm going to show you two of those ways in this lesson. So let's go to Working Files, go to Projects, and go to Changing Time. We have four different sequences here. We're going to do a variety of speed changing tasks, a couple of them just for fun, and a couple have some practical sides to them too. Now, I mentioned there are three different ways to do this. Let me show you all three of them. One's called the Rate Stretch tool right there. It looks for all the world like a trim tool, but it just has this kind of angled line going through it. That means you can just stretch things out or shrink things down. That's one way to do things. If you right click on a clip here or in the project panel, you can go to Speed Duration. It opens up this dialog box where you can change the speed and have a few other options as well. Cancel out of that. And finally, with every single clip, there are a number of effects that are already applied to the clips that are just sort of sitting in neutral, waiting for you to work on the effects if you choose to. And one of the effects, if you go to the Effect Controls panel, is Time Remapping. It's a relatively complex effect. I'll just give you a taste of it there. We're not going to work with this one now. We're going to work with this one later when we talk about effects. So we're just going to take a pass on time remapping for the time being. Let me just go to Dressage Rider, and the first thing we're going to do is work with the Rate Stretch tool, which I've selected over here. It has the keyboard shortcut of X. Not that you need to remember that, because you're going to hardly ever use it. Here we have this Dressage Rider, getting some instruction from her teacher here. So you're not pushing forward and pulling at the same time. All right. What I want to do is make her go faster, go into fast motion. And so to do that, I use the Rate Stretch tool. And if I'm going to make something go faster, that means that it has to have the same amount of stuff happening in less time. So with the Rate Stretch tool, if I drag it to the left, if I shrink the length of the clip like so, then it's going to go basically twice as fast, because I've cut the distance by half. It's going to be the same amount of stuff, just going in less time. Let's watch that. Well, the consequence of that, of course, is that the voice goes up in pitch as it goes faster, which is an issue. Do you want the voice to change pitch? Maybe not. Nevertheless, that's what happens if you change the speed by making it go faster. Let's drag it out a bit and make it go slower. So I'm going to add time to it now. So the same amount of stuff is going to happen over more time. Right. <laughs> so you're not pushing forward and... Whoa, sounds like some evil voice. But at any rate, that's still her instructor, just a, a deep voice now. And that's what happens. I stretched it out, so I slowed down the voice and the pitch dropped. What's going on here is that frames are being duplicated if you stretch it out. You're not creating intermediary frames that somehow fill the gap. It's just that they're being duplicated, but they're going by fast enough that you don't really notice any kind of stuttering when you change the number of frames. So if you shrink it down, you're cutting the number of frames. If you increase the length, you're going to start duplicating frames. Now, how do we deal with that pitch, and how do we put things in reverse motion? I'll show you how to do that using the speed duration command. Let me just go Controller Command Z to undo what we just did there and go back to the starting point. Yes, that you get that surge. Right, there we are, back to normal. I'm going to right click on this clip. I'm going to go to Speed Duration. Now it says Speed 100% and Duration, and they're linked. I can change the duration, and that will change the speed. And I want to cut the speed now in half. I'm going to go 50%, so we're going to go much slower. So you notice now it's 57 seconds long instead of what it was before when I was at 100. At 100, it was like that, it's 28 seconds, but now it's 50%, it's twice as long, 57. But the cool thing you can do is that you can maintain audio pitch. This is really remarkable. The speech will slow down, but the pitch will be the same. And the timbre, the quality of the voice, will be pretty much the same as the original, which is remarkable. I'll click OK. The clip gets much longer. And let's listen for a second. I'm pulling at the same time. That, yes! It's pretty darn amazing. It has kind of a tunnel sound, like you're in some metallic tunnel. Nevertheless, that's pretty good. Listen again. Did you get that surge in the but There you go. We put it in slow motion. Another thing you can do with the speed duration is put it in reverse. Let me go back to it by right-clicking on this, the speed duration, and we'll click reverse speed this time. And this time, instead of 50%, we'll go 200%, meaning we're going to speed it up a lot. We'll try to maintain the pitch again here. There you go. So now it's half as long because we made it faster. Let's listen to this now. <laughs> kind of a little herky-jerky, but that's because the machine is working pretty hard to make this thing happen. It'll be smooth when this thing is rendered as a final project. 
<laughs> and then the voice, of course, maintained the pitch, but went backwards. That's just some of the fun stuff you can do. If you want to have something change speed over time, where it changes gradually over time, that's when you use time remapping over here in the effect controls. We're not able to do that like this, but there's kind of a workaround. If you want to have things change over time, you can cut this in a few places and have the speed gradually increase at each cut, but it won't be smooth. It just, you know, jumps from one cut to the next. Nevertheless, you can make it kind of gradually go up or go down if you cut the clips in a few places. Let's move on to this bike riding sequence. I've got two clips here. I want them both to go a little bit faster. They're kind of on a leisurely bike ride here. You know, la -de -da -de -da. I'd rather have them just go a little bit faster and I want them both to go the same speed. So if I take the right stretch tool and drag things out, I can't really get the exact speed I want. If I right click on it, it'll tell me exactly what I did. It says I went to 5693. That's kind of bizarre. If I spread out the view here by pressing the plus key a little bit. Now you start noticing up here in the header, it'll say what the speed is. It puts it in these square brackets, which is a good thing. But I'd rather have it be a nice, easy number to work with so we can apply it to both clips equally. And this clip right now is going kind of slow, so I'd rather have it go faster. 56.93 is even slower. So let's speed those guys up. I'm going to right click and go speed duration. Have it be 200%, so that's a nice, even number, and we're going to maintain the audio pitch, so it's going to make it short. You right click on this one, go to speed duration, make you 200% too, twice as fast, maintain audio pitch, there you go. And now it shrinks it down to the left. I can trim these guys. Let me go to the point where I want to start the clip. I'll start right there, so I can use my ripple edit tool by going back to my selection tool, holding down the controller command, and trimming to that point there. I can slide you over. And I want to trim you two to that point where they come into the frame, right about there. Click away and hold on the controller command to that point. There we go. Same thing over here where they go out of frame. And they're out of frame there. Do a ripple edit there by holding down controller command, clicking and pulling over. And now we've got these guys edited. So you can edit after the fact. Let me see how that looks now. We've sped them up a little bit. We're riding with more alacrity now. Okay, now we're talking. And off they go. <laughs> but you can see it works pretty smoothly. What I'm trying to show you there is that you can make accurate speed changes and apply them equally to both clips if you want to do that. You can also select a whole bunch of clips over here if you want to. You just go over here and select these clips, let's say, and click on the first one and shift click on that one. When you right click, you have speed duration, and you can apply the speed duration to all those clips at once, just so you know. Let's move on down to the scenic sequence. This is a practical problem that you can encounter many times. You have a certain amount of space to fill and your clips aren't long enough to fill the space. Let's say your producer says, I want to have 50 seconds of these scenics and you've got 47 seconds and 26 frames. You need to come up with two seconds and four frames and you've got these three clips and there aren't any extra head or tail frames and so you are in some degree of trouble. Two seconds and four frames. Well, let's add some time to all these clips. Let's slow them down just a little bit. So I'm going to right click on this first one and say speed duration. And I want to make it just a little bit longer. I've got two seconds and four frames that I need to fill. That's 64 frames. If I want to start dividing, I can do something like 21 or 22 frames. So I'm going to go to 16, 19, let's say. I go 16, 19. And I want to maintain the audio pitch of this natural sound. And then there's this little checkbox down here, which is really a clever thing. It says Ripple Edit, Shifting Trailing Clips. If I didn't have this button available to me, and it wasn't available in previous versions of Premiere Pro back a couple of versions. Now that it's here, though, it's great. I click that, and it's going to shove everybody to the right, because I'm making this clip just a little bit longer. I'm making it, you know, like 22 frames longer. Click OK. Everybody gets pushed over to the right, and this clip at the beginning will now play a little bit slower. Not that anybody would notice, though, which is nice. So we're, okay, we're close to saving our skins here. Let's go to this next guy and add like 22 frames to that. So I'll right click, speed duration. We'll add 22 frames this one. So we'll make this one, well, let's say 16.8. Let's make it 16.08. Like so, we'll maintain audio pitch. We'll do the ripple edit. Watch how this last clip slides over to the right a bit. There you go. Let's go to the end now, end. And we are now at 49.10. I need 20 more frames, people. Right click on this thing, go to speed duration, and make you 20 frames longer, which is gonna be 17.03. Go to 
zero, three. We're maintaining the audio pitch. We don't need to worry about ripple now because we're at the end and we're done. And we're now 50 seconds long exactly. And our producer goes, wow, of course, nice job. Doesn't know that you work so hard to make this thing happen. Okay, so here we are in this piano sequence. And remember the little issue we had with this one? Our timing was just a little bit off the second time I shot this. Let's just watch her left hand here and see where it hits the bass note relative to when we hear the bass note. Just not quite right there. The next one. You see her pushing it down, but you don't hear the note yet. Then you hear it just moments later. So she's playing here just slightly faster than she played in the original clip down here. So we need to make this guy just a little bit slower. So I'm going to take the rate stretch tool here. And just drag it to the right just a little bit to kind of stretch it out to make it a little bit slower. I'm just going to drag it out a little bit here. And it's now 96%, so it means that we slowed it down. Let's see if that looks now. Boy, right on the money. 96% is the magic time. So sometimes you can do a little rate stretch like this to make your clips fit. So I think you can see there are some practical applications and some fun applications for working with time in Premiere Pro. You can make time go faster, make time go slower, put time in reverse, and then make time fit exactly that time frame that you want to fill.